left your Bibles, go with me to Philippians, the fourth chapter. Man, I'm excited. Philippians chapter number four uh, and verse number six. Glory to God. Philippians four, verse number six. We, this is uh, sort of part two of, I mean, the second continuation of part number two, but really it's part number three. So if you got an outline that says part number three, it's because we didn't finish part number two. <laughs> it's the same outline, but I had, since it's a different date, I put a different date and a different part on it. Y'all just excuse me in my folly, okay? <laughs> but guys, I'm excited about what God is teaching us because I think if we grasp this concept and we begin to understand truly the privilege that has been given to us, man, we're going we're gonna to be able to, to move some mountains in our life. Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse number 6 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Verse 7 says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace, everybody say his peace, peace. will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Verse 8 says what? Uh, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts. Everybody say my thoughts. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and holy and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Glory to God. Talking about what happens when we pray. We clearly understand from this text that peace, we can have peace when we pray. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will come in and keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Now, I start off and I said this, that that God made us in his image and in his likeness. Is that correct? God created us and he made man to to be a creator and a cultivator. God spoke, God said, when God said it, it came into manifestation. And he made us in his image and his likeness. Now again, we know God is a spirit. And so we are, we are, we are, we as human beings, we are three-part being. We're first of all spirit being, we possess a soul, and we live in a physical body. Is that correct? We are three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And we know that God, he's the, the triune God, the Trinity. He's God the Father, God the Son, and God what? The Holy Spirit. And so, so when he made us in his image and his likeness, he gave us the privilege to be able to speak and things happen. He gave us the ability to pray, amen, amen, to him. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not faint or not lose heart. The Bible says men, we ought to pray without what? Ceasing. Is that correct? And I thank God, men, for, for, for we, we're in the middle of uh, 31 days of prayer. And the men led us out that first week. The women led us out the second week. And the young adult are going to lead us out this coming week. But there is something about rising early to pray, to get before God. There's something about training your flesh and telling your flesh, hey, you're going to get up. I know it's inconvenient. I know you're used to holding on to 7 a.m., but in order to get there for 6 a.m., you got to get up at probably 5.15 if you get dressed fast. If you're a slow dresser, you got to get up at 5. And depending on how far you're away, I think a couple times Gary Charlotte drove all the way from South Shreveport all the way to Benton, Louisiana, and got here at 6 a.m. How many of y'all, you got to teach your flesh, you got to train your flesh, you got to discipline your flesh to get up that early, right? Everybody say, early. Yeah, early. I like early, y'all. Now, I don't like it very much. My body don't like it, but my body's gotten used to early. And I think there's there's something to the pattern that Jesus laid out for us in Scripture. And I'm not saying you can't pray at any time. You can pray any time of day, midday, at night. But Jesus got up before day and communed with his Father. There's something about of the freshness of a new day. There's something about getting before God before your mind gets cluttered with all of the the responsibilities and all of the the, the requirements that you have going on in your life. Because a lot of us are busy people, right? I mean, and so you get going, doing things, have responsibility, and if you're not careful, you'll squeeze out that time with God. So early is a good thing. And so, so, so I, I, my, my suggestion, it's not a command, this is my suggestion is, is that if you really want to start spending time with God, start waking up 30 minutes earlier than what you used to, amen, in order to spend that time with God, amen? But we've been having an excellent time of prayer, so I want to encourage you to join us. There's still time. 
There is still time. We got 17 more days. Am I right about it? Did I do my math right? Days are 14. We said 31 days. If you subtract 14 from 31, that gives you what? Come on, math geniuses. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so we, 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 again, let's get back. So God, 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 God made man in his image to create, to cultivate, and develop God's world. Is that what he did? He created man in his image to, to, to create, to cultivate, and develop his world. Amen? But again, we said that he, God did it by speaking, and, and, and that's a pattern for us. As God's prized creation, he has given us the privilege to speak things into existence. Amen? But I told you, you look on your outline, you cannot rise above what you allow yourself to think or say. I'm going to repeat that again. You cannot rise above what you allow yourself to think or to say. Because the words of our mouth begin with our thinking. Pro put up Proverbs 23 and 7. Let's read it right quick, and we're going to keep rolling here. Proverbs 23 and 7. Glory to God. I thank God for you guys today. Hallelujah. Go, go to, if you put it, put it in the King James Version. I'm going to stick with the KJV a lot today. So if you would put it in the KJV. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I tell you that there are three sources from which we receive our thoughts. Number one, we receive it from our five senses, right? Number two, we receive our thoughts, amen, from the enemy. The enemy will send stuff into our mind, right? That's what he did with Judas, put the thought of betraying Jesus. He put that thought in his mind. And thoughts come from God, from our five senses, from the devil, and from God. The main difference between thoughts that come from God and thoughts that come from our five senses is that God deals with our spirit. Everybody say, God deals with my spirit. And the other deals with our mind, all right? Again, the difference between the thoughts that come from God's and the thoughts that come from our five senses is, is that five senses deal with our mind because when we sense something, it comes to our mind and then we, we will evaluate that based on what our mind sees and understands. But God, when he speaks to us, the Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of my man is where God abides. The spirit of my a man is where the Holy Spirit takes up residence on the inside of us because we are spirit, soul, and body. But if we're going to worship God, we got to worship him what? In spirit and in truth. And so God speaks to our spirit man. And I told you our mind's like a computer. It's got to be programmed, amen. And after reprogramming our mind, we, we must censor our thought life. Because everything that comes to your mind is not good. Is that right? I don't care how saved you are, you speak in the tongues, but you're going to have some thoughts that have to be captured because if they're not captured, they're going to linger there and begin to produce some imaginations. Is that right? And then if those imaginations hang around for a while, they're going to produce some what? Some strongholds, right? Our thoughts, which is the initial data that comes to our mind, it, the original ideas, they come there. And then if they linger there, they begin to produce some imagination. I told you about the song last week, Just My Imagination, Running Away With Me. That man didn't have that woman, but it was his imagination. Can I get a witness? So we have our, our, our thoughts, our imagination, and our strongholds. You got that on your outline. We don't have time to go back there. But let's, go, let's, let's keep moving forward. Go to Hebrews, the third chapter, verse number one right quick. Hallelujah. Are you still tracking with me today? What happens when we pray? We know we, peace comes. But I don't think we fully have grasped the ability and the authority that God has given each one of us as his prized creation to, to move and to operate like him. Right? God desires for us to know his will for our life. God desires for us to know, amen, his thoughts. Right? Because if, he, if, if the text says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, then that means that if God said let it, that means we have the capacity as human beings to have the mind of Christ. And if I have the mind of Christ, then that means I got the mind of God. Wait a minute, brother preacher, what do you mean? Well, 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 Jesus and his father are one. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. 
The Word was God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among men. The Word became flesh in, 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 in the form of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So if Jesus and his Father are one, and then I got the mind of Christ, then that means I got the mind of the Father. Is that right? All right, now watch, watch. Come on, come on. Wrong get out there. Wherefore, wherefore, holy brethren, wherefore, holy brethren, can y'all read with me? Let's read out loud on purpose. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Watch, stop, 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 stop. Here, the writer of Hebrews, which some purport to be the apostle Paul, it is, it's, we're, we're not sure. The, many theologians have, have debated and argued whether or not the apostle Paul wrote Hebrews. Uh, but, but whether he wrote or not, as I always say, all scripture is inspired by God. Right? And so, but as he writes this, he's writing to, to, to talk about the superiority of the high priest of Jesus Christ compared to, amen, the priesthood, amen, of the high priest under, under the old covenant and compared to the priesthood of Melchizedek, okay? We have a greater high priest. Watch this. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the what? The apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He's the, he's the apostle, which means a what? What's an apostle? And sent one, one who is sent forth to establish what? Kingdom work. That's what an apostle does. An apostle is not just a name that you tag onto the front of your name and put on the doorpost of your church, I'm Apostle John Smith. No, an apostle, when someone who, who operates in that, in that role, he is sent forth to establish the work of ministry. He is sent forth. Everybody say sent forth. The apostle and the high priest of our profession. That's what he says. The writer says, Christ Jesus is the apostle and the high priest of our profession. What is a profession? It's what you say. He's the high priest of our profession, or you can use the word conf confession. If you confess, that means you do, you do what? If you confess, you, do, you, do, you have to say something. Y'all don't watch these court dramas and uh, whether it's law and order or whatever, or whatever you, you know, go back to the day to watch Matlock, or you go back and, anybody know, remember Matlock? All right? You, you, you go and, uh, 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 you know, some of you go way back, and there's, some, there's a lot of shows that you watched back in the day that had courtroom scenes. And anytime uh, uh, you're sitting on the witness stand, come on now, uh, and a question is asked of you, you can't just nod your head. Right? Everybody say, you got to say something. The judge will tell you, hey amen, speak out loud, speak loud, say, articulate what you're trying to say. You can't just do this here. You got to say no. You got to say yes. Can I get a witness? It is your confession. The text says he's the high priest of our profession or our confession. That means what we say, he, if he's the apostle of what we say, an apostle is a sent one. That means that Jesus Christ, our high priest and our apostle, will take our words and, 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 and take them to the Father who's in heaven. Are y'all getting this? God gave us the privilege to be able to pray, to be able to speak, amen, his word, amen, and, and our apostle will take it to him. When he takes it, amen, it got to line up with, with his will, right? Y'all understand that, right? But when it lines up with his will, he takes our words to the Father and we get an answer. We can call on the Lord and get an answer, y'all. That's critically important for us to understand because Jesus' role, he's not only our Savior, but he's the high priest, he's the apostle and the high priest of our profession or what we say. So what we got to figure out is, is start, how do we start saying the right thing? Well, one way we start saying the right thing is we start thinking the right thing. And the way we start thinking the right thing is getting our minds right and getting our hearts right. Go with me right quick. Uh, to Matthew, the 12th chapter. I want you to look at something real quickly. And you, this is something that you've probably read before, but I need you to hear it and let's, 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 let's kind of dial in on it. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Look at verse number 34. Amen? Because our, 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 what we say, again, is directly t tied to what's in our heart. Y'all know this, but I want y'all to see it again. Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse number 34. Y'all there with me? Come on, let's read together. It says what? Old generation of vipers. Stop. Who's talking here? 
Jesus is. How do you know? Ocean red in your Bible, right? Uh, you got a red letter edition Bible. It'll be in red every time Jesus talks. Old generation of vipers. Who is he talking to? Not disciples. He's talking to Pharisees. He's talking to religious leaders. And notice what he tells the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, y'all are a bunch of snakes. Can I put it that way? That's what a viper is, right? Oh, come on. Read it with me again. It says what? He said, y'all, it's a bunch of y'all, a generation of, y'all been doing this for a long time. Oh, generation of vipers. Why this. How can you, being evil, speak what? Good things for out of the mouth does what? The mouth does what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. The New Living Translation read this way, you brood of snakes. How could evil men like you speak what is good and right for whatever's in your heart determines what you say? Go to verse number 35 with me right quick. Let's read. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth what? Evil things. Now watch this, guys. The Pharisees were trying to put up a, 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 a front, a false front here. And Jesus checked them on it. How many of y'all know... When you get checked by Jesus, man, you've really been checked. Any of y'all been checked by the Lord before? Any of y'all doing your thing, thinking that you, you know, you, you know, you getting by and you slipping and sliding and ducking and diving and you know, hiding and yeah, slipping and tipping. Whatever it is you're trying to sneak and do and think that don't nobody know about it. We serve a God who sits high and he looks low. We serve a God who knows everything that's going on in our life. And you can't, there's nothing hidden before his face. So we think that sometimes, we think that when we hide it from people, we're hiding it from God, but God knows exactly where we are. He knows that lie you told. Huh? He knows, he knows that, that, that you could have been there, but you made an excuse not to be there. Huh? He knows that you were with somebody you shouldn't have been with. knows. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord has a way of unpacking and uncovering your stuff. If you belong to him, he's not going to let you wallow in sin forever and a day. He gives you, yes, he gives you time to repent because he's trying to cover you. Think about this for a second. When Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden, what's the first thing that God did? When they came to him and uh, you know, they, got, he says, where are you, Adam? Where, 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 where are y'all? Like, y'all know God knew. I, I, I preached a sermon one time telling you, and we talked about the fact that when God asks a question, he already knows the answer to the question before he ever asked the question. He's God. He knows everything, right? And so sometimes he's asking, the, not sometimes, he's asking the question to reveal to you and me, amen, where we are. He said, where are you, Adam? I, you know, God, we, 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 we hiding. Why are you hiding, Adam? Because we're naked. Who told you you were naked? See, before the fall, nakedness was not a, it was, that was an age of innocence. How many of y'all remember you know, when your child was young and they were innocent? And, and, and maybe you were getting ready to change their diaper and you had pulled the pamper off and wiped them and cleaned them up and the baby got up and ran outside Naked. That baby was not ashamed. He was naked, and they, they would just they, babies would come out, and they they just come out in front of. Him. They don't care because they're innocent, right? Now I would dare say none of y'all right at forty years old coming out the back of your house, out of the room, butt naked. You got company. I hope you're not, right? He said, "Who told you you were naked?" Because they had fallen, but what, immediately what God do? God, amen, God found a sacrifice. 
he found a sacrifice which was, which was a picture or a foreshadowing of the sacrifice that would come by way of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. He, he found a sacrifice. He killed an animal and took the skins of the animal to cover their nakedness. See, God, God, God gives us opportunity to get out of the stuff that we're in that we shouldn't be in. He's covering us, but if we continue in that stuff, in order to get us out of that stuff, God will take his hand off of us when we stop listening to him. And he'll allow the things that, that, that the natural course of things to take place. And the next thing you know, in order for you to get out of it, you got to get exposed. And now that you're exposed, then now God can get you to listen to him. Because until some people are so hard at it that they're not going to listen to God until they have to listen to him. And there's no other option. Are y'all with me? So God covered them. Can I get a witness? But watch, let, let me keep moving. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth what? Evil things. Evil things. Evil things. And Jesus said, hold on for a second. You can't speak good things. Talk to the, these Pharisees, right? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it, right? The mouth speak it. Uh, look at the next verse. Let's keep reading. 36 says what? But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Verse number 37 says what? For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. What's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. You might cover it up for a while, but just as soon as you get aggravated or you get the opportunity, it's going to come out of your mouth. It's going to come out of your heart. You know, there's some stuff that you had down in your heart and you wanted to say, but you kept it back until you got aggravated or you got mad. How many of y'all have had this scenario before? Now, now listen, you're in a relationship with somebody, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, or whether it's a coworker, co uh, a family member, a mother, a child. And there's some stuff you wanted to say, but you, you wouldn't say it. You, you held it back. It was in your heart to say, but you wouldn't say it. And the only time you said it, said it when you got aggravated, you got mad. And you got aggravated, you got mad because they were talking to you about your stuff. You were dealing with a problem that you were creating. And so now when, you, when they start dealing with your stuff in order to deflect the attention from you, you went back and got some stuff that really was in your heart all along, but you didn't say anything until you got aggravated and got mad. Can I get one witness up in here? It was in there all along, and how you really felt was down on the inside, but you didn't say anything until it was almost pulled out of you. Right? Because it was in your heart. Amen? But eventually it's going to come out, right? Eventually it will come out. Jesus said that a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. But notice verse 37 says, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be con condemned. Well, if you want to see how true this verse is, get arrested. Get arrested. The arresting officer, by law, in America has to state or give you, they, 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 there's a term that's called Mirandize. They have to re give you your Miranda rights. What, what is that? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be, let me put it, and will be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to an attorney, a lawyer for advice before we ask you any question. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you can't afford a lawyer, what will happen? We'll appoint one for you. They tell you that you have the right to remain silent because what you say and do can be used against you in the judicial process. Is that, is that right? So, so what Jesus says, for by thy words thou shalt be what? Justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You can hang yourself by talking. Look at the name of the neighbor. You can hang yourself by talking. The officer has to tell you to keep your mouth shut by law because they know. He says if you if you do say anything, he, they gonna use it. Can I get a witness? And by by virtue of the fact that if they don't Mirandize you and you say something, they can't use it. By your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Well, not. Let's go to a spiritual realm with that. In the spiritual world, the devil is like some slick lawyer who's trying to hang you with your words. 
Hear me carefully. I'm going somewhere. He will use your words to accuse you before the Father. Look at what Revelation 12 and 10 says. Pop it up. Y'all can turn that with me right quick. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 10. Because, I, because we don't realize that God created us to be like him. He said, I created you in my image and in my likeness. And God, whenever he, and he created us to create to, and, and to cultivate and to develop this world that he, that, that he put into existence, right? And so as a result of that, part of our operating means that we're going to operate like him. We're going to have to say some things. We've got to pray some things. We've got to speak some things. Remember what Matthew 11 says, Say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he said shall come to pass. He'll have what he, not what he thought, not what he daydreamed about, but what he says with his mouth. Death and life are where? And they that love it shall eat the fruit. There, what is the fruit of your mouth? The words that you speak. And so the words that we speak in our prayer time can have significant impact. But we got to realize the enemy is out there trying to trap us. Look at what Revelation 12 and 10 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God, they are not. Here's what's happening, guys. Satan is coming to the Father, trying to get to him, amen, and he's accusing, amen, you and I before the Father. He said, well, you remember, you know, that, 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 uh, that uh, yeah, 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 you know, that Deborah Fray Jones lady, you know, she, yeah, she, she said she saved, but you know what? She did this. Uh, 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 that Gary Johnson uh, fellow, yeah, yeah, he said he saved, but guess what? He lied last week. Uh, that, that, that Charles Hardman fellow, that Vic Hill fellow, you know, um, yeah, they say they, they save and they, and, they, and, they, and they love you, but guess what they did? They tipped out on their wife. I ain't say y'all did. I'm just, come on, just, <laughs> just, just use y'all as an example, okay? I don't, I don't know nothing. But don't act funny now because you may get yourself away now. Ain't nobody told me nothing. But, but that's what he's doing. So, so when, when, when the accuser, Stacey of the brethren, goes before the father to accuse us because we are less than perfect, we mess up along the way. Can I get a witness? When he goes to the father to accuse us, we got, amen, a high priest sitting on the right hand of the father said, my blood covered that. My blood covered that. It wiped it away. Get out of here. Are y'all tracking with me today? We have an accuser of the brother. We, listen, guys, guys the, the usual word, watch this, watch this, listen carefully. Uh, when it says here, uh, the devil uh, or the accuser of the brethren, the word for accuser is categoria. Everybody say categoria. And it's, just, it's a Greek word which means to accuse in a judicial procedure, okay? And, and the usual word for the devil is diabolical, which we get our word diabolical, Amen. You know what diabolical means, right? That means bad. That means terrible. Amen? So it's diabolical, which means to slander. But the word, that, that word is not used. The word for accuser here is categorical, which means to accuse in a judicial procedure. So what the devil is doing, he's trying to, he's going to the Father on us, telling the Father what we've done. And But our high priest is sitting right there on the right hand of the Father, amen, saying, my blood covered that. Aren't you glad that the blood washes away your sins? Aren't you glad that the blood of Jesus is there to cleanse you? He said his word, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to do what? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now watch, watch, okay? So, 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 so we cannot afford to give the accuser any words to use against us. He's, he's, he's our, he's, we, give, we, we already doing enough. But when we start speaking the wrong things, we have to give our, our, our high priest, our apostle of our profession, Jesus Christ, amen, faith-filled words to use in our plea before the Father. Can, can I get a witness? Go to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Matthew, chapter 15. Look at verse number 10. I'm just trying to set the atmosphere for you guys because we don't realize that what we say has impact. 
Too, here's what I discovered. Too many of us as believers uh, walk around in negativity. We walk around and we listen to folk who tell us what we can't do. We listen to people who will tell us, well, you're not going to be able to do that because of the color of your skin. You better get out of my face. Because the God that I serve is not a respected person. The God that I serve, amen, is able to do exceeding abundant above all I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. I am not going to speak doubt and unbelief. I'm going to speak victory over my situation because I serve a God who's able. But, but, but some of us hang out with negative people even in the church who don't have no faith. They speak in doubt and unbelief and you hanging around them and the next thing you know you're talking doubt and unbelief. We're snared by the words of our mouth. Listen to what Jesus said here. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse number 10. Y'all there with me? Come on, let's go. This is what? And he called the multitude and said unto them. Watch this, watch this. Look, are y'all still with me? Next verse. Uh, he says, he called the multitude and said, hear and understand. Is that right? Next verse says what? Not that which goeth into the mouth is that the file of the man? But that which what? That which come where? Out of the mouth. This defiled the man. Next verse says what? Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Because remember, they, they, these guys, these Pharisees, the religious leaders, were, were, were being critical of the disciples because they didn't go through the ceremonial washing of the hands before the eating of the meal. Now again, you know, it's, 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 it's good to wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, whatever you need to use to, uh, to, uh, before you eat. But this was, a, this, was, this, was a, this was something they were doing as a religious uh, um, protocol. And what Jesus was trying to get them to understand, it ain't what goes in you that mess you up. Now, now, there's something you can eat that can mess you up physically. I mean, some stuff, you know, can I put it this way? If, if, you, if, you, if, you get, if you know Mexican food does you a certain way, it may not be wise to eat Mexican food when you get ready to go on an airplane and have a <laughs> three-hour flight. Just not wisdom, probably. But that's not really what I'm talking about here. Jesus is talking about the heart. Okay, I threw some of y'all off there. I'm sorry. Okay. Come, come on back to, with the past. Come on back. Come on back. Come back. Watch this. Then came his disciples and said to him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Look at verse number 13. Because they, 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 were, they, were, they were coming out down on them because they didn't do the ceremony of washing. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father had planted, shall be rooted up. Next verse. Let them alone. The wait a minute, wait a second. Let them alone. They be blind, <laughs> leads the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both going to fall into the ditch. Jesus kind of, remember when Jesus talks about you, he kind of cuts you. you. You don't even know you've been cut. You ever been cut by somebody that didn't know you were cut? Man, I'm bleeding. Watch this. Next verse. Come on, let's go. We got to go. go. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Come on, verse 16. And Jesus said, Are you also yet without understanding? You walking with me, you don't understand. Look at the next verse. Come on, let's go. It says, Do not you yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is what? Is cast out in the drought. Modern day 2019 language, what you eat gonna come out, out when you go to the bathroom. That's exactly what Jesus is saying here. What you put in your stomach, at some point in time, it's gonna come out your body. Right? All right, all right, all right. Let's move to the next verse. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. 
See, there were these Pharisees who were talking about certain dietary restrictions, and they, they said if you ate certain things that defiled you, that made you unclean. He said, it ain't, it ain't what goes in that makes you unclean. It's what's in your heart. Come on now. But those things which proceed out of the mouth coming forth from the heart, those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. Let me ask you a question. What proceeds from your mouth? Come on, talk to me. What proceeds from your mouth? Words, right? He said, the food you eat, that ain't what's messing you up. That's not making you unclean. That's not making you unholy. But it's what's coming out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth? Words. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come, from, come forth from the heart, and they do what? Defile the man. What Jesus is doing here, guys, is presenting a simple teaching here. He's, he's, what he's saying is that your words will tell what you are and either condemn you or justify you. Your words are an extension of yourself. Your words are spirit and they are extensions of you. Amen? When you put out words, they are a part of you and you are responsible for them. And some of us, We'll pretend like we're joking when we say certain things. And we're really not joking. That's really what we want to say. I'm not saying it's wrong to joke because laughter do a good like a medicine, right? How many of y'all know some of, some of y'all need to laugh a little bit more? Amen. Let me say it again. Some of y'all need to laugh a little bit more. Some of y'all are too doggone serious. I believe when you look in the Bible, you, you can see that Jesus had a sense of humor. He told these boys, y'all, listen, you don't understand either? You're walking with me. Guys, listen, uh, uh, what, what we say has impact. All right, watch it. Look at the next verse. Okay, 19 and 20, let's read. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. All this stuff comes where? All of it comes from where? All of it comes from where? So why are you going around telling folks just follow your heart? Why are you telling people, follow your heart, baby? No, uh, don't do that because your heart got this stuff in it. Back up, back it up, back up. Look at it again. Back, go, go for it. It says, for out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, murders, adultery. What is fornication? What is fornication? Oh, let me say it again. What is fornication? No, it, it includes that, but it goes beyond that. Fornication is sexual immorality. It's anything that you're doing of a sexual nature that's not a part of God's will. Viewing pornography, bestiality, homosexuality and lesbianism, theft, I mean, fornication, not thefts, <laughs> Well, if you stole somebody's wife, then that would technically be adultery. So, okay, I'm gonna fix that one, Sherry. <laughs> Fornication is sexual immorality. It, goes, it, it includes sex outside of marriage. I mean, outside of marriage, but it encompasses some other things too. Now, watch these guys. See, we live in a culture now that when I say that, some of y'all are like. <laughs> Pastor, you, you don't know what time of day it is. Psh, Pastor, you know that who 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 can who can go and keep themselves? Come on, Pastor, wake up. Come on, Pastor, you, you you're old folk and now you're 56. You don't know. I know what time of day it is. I know what's happening. And I know what the word of God says. That's why your little tail keep getting hurt because you keep giving your little tail to somebody who don't have no commitment to you. I'm going I'm to say this especially to the young ladies. Y'all, and again, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't mean any disrespect or any, any harm, but I, I got to say this to you and, and, and to young brothers too, but particularly young ladies. When you decide 
to give it up. You don't really, I mean, it's tough on you because you gave yourself to him. If he don't want to be around you because you're not giving yourself to him, and he's supposed to be a Christian too, huh? Yeah. He's screaming, and God is telling you right now he's mad and upset, and then now all of a sudden he's spending time with you, but he's not spending time with you because you're not giving yourself to him. I like that, Jane. He's telling you what he's really all about. Okay? All right. Now, I, that, I'm, I'm going to do a teaching on saved and single. I told you before, I'm, I'm going to get around to saved and single. And we're going to talk about how to be saved and single. You save, but how to, how to live single and keep your honor and integrity. from the male perspective and the female perspective. Brothers, oh, single brothers in the house. I said, <laughs> yeah. Single brothers in the house. Yeah, you can keep yourself and be a, a, a godly man. You, that don't mean that you that you weak, that you are uh, whatever. Be a strong man of valor. Be a man of integrity. Honor, honor the women who you, who you come in contact with. Don't treat them like they left them what, what God has created them to be. Okay, that's a, that's a sidebar. I got to keep moving up. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fun, I got, I got, fornication, thefts, fault witness, blasphemy. Verse 20, read, read. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defile not a man. It's the stuff that comes out of our heart. That's what messes us up. And what's indicating what's in our hearts is the words that come from our mouth. Can I get a witness? When God had to shut the mouths of some people in the scripture, y'all remember that? We don't, we don't have time to go, but Joshua, the sixth chapter, uh, verse number 10, when Joshua and them were getting ready to do battle with Jericho as they went into the land of promise, God told them what? Here's the battle strategy. But Craig, he told him this, for six days, I want y'all to march around Jericho. Don't say a word. Do not open your big mouth. For six days, I want you, he said, do not shout. Do not even talk. Whoo, that would have messed some of us up, wouldn't it? Six days without talking? Some of y'all can't go six minutes without talking. Talking loud ain't saying nothing. Do not shout. Do not even talk. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then you shout. God had to shut their mouth. Go to Luke, the first chapter with me right quick. Luke chapter 1. Come on. Hurry, hurry. Luke chapter 1. Verse 18. Verse 18. I'm sorry. Luke 1, verse 18. Look at this. And watch this, this, this when I, I've read this time and time again, but when I saw it again for the first time, as, as I always say, it, 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 it kind of jumped off the page. He said, Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, <laughs> and my wife is also well along in years. Now, for you to study your Bibles, you know and understand, this is dealing with uh, John the Baptist's uh, parents, Right? Uh, and here we have, uh, in this context, he's been told that a miraculous birth is going to take place. All right? And some, guys, sometimes we get a word from God. If we don't settle our hearts in the word, that thought that came from God, we'll dismiss it because we're not engrossed in the word of God. I told you before that that. How we receive and, and, and dismiss thoughts is going to be determined on, on how our mind has been girded up. Are you with me today? And so here we see 
uh, in this passage of scripture, uh, it says, then the angels, uh, then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news because his wife was old. What, what, what was John the Baptist's mother's name? It was, it was, is, is, it, is that right? What's his daddy's name? Zacharias. All right, watch this now. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. Now, next verse reads, says what? Uh, but now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. That's what God said. Because this guy was speaking doubt, and God said, since you're talking doubt, shut your mouth, you're going to be dumb and can't say a word. Because there's power in our words. God says, I got to get the forerunner, John the Baptist, birthed into the earth realm, and he's coming through you, Zachariah, and through your wife, Elizabeth. Yeah, I know she's old. Yes, I know she's no longer menstruating. Yes, I know she's no longer passing the egg, but I'm going to birth, amen, the forerunner of Christ through you. I, we, that, that can't happen. Okay, shut your mouth. You, you talking, you speaking doubt and unbelief. Shut your mouth. Is that what he says? He says, but now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until this child is born, for my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Look at the next verse. Come on, let's read it. It says what? Uh, meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. Y'all know why he taking so long? Because God shut his mouth. Watch this. Verse 22 says what? When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to, he couldn't speak to him. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. word. 23, come on, let's read. It says what? When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Next verse says what? Soon after when his wife, Elizabeth, they became, got, guys, she got pregnant because God shut his doubtful mouth. Come on now. Soon after when his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. Next verse says what? Come on, let's read. How kind the Lord is, she explained. Because in this culture, if a woman could not have children, especially a male child, she was scorned by the culture. And so now Elizabeth, an old lady, says how kind the Lord is. Lord is. Some of y'all, when y'all got pregnant, y'all didn't say how kind the Lord is. You're like, oh my God, what has happened? I thought you, I thought you. I hate to admit it, but some, some, some of us wasn't playing. I mean, it's good you're here, good that we're here. But some of y'all know it was a surprise. But everybody said, the Lord knew. He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. 26 says what? Come on, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the village in Galilee. Next verse says what? To a virgin named Mary. Now watch the different response. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Next verse says what? Come on. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Next verse. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Watch this. Don't be afraid. She was confused. She didn't know what he meant. Don't be afraid, Mary. He says, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. Next verse, read. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. Look at this. Watch this. He will be, a, he will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Next verse, come on. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? Now, guys, it's okay to ask God questions, but it's not okay to question God. Y'all hear me say it all the time. It's okay to say, God, you know, I don't understand what's going on here, Lord, and I don't know what's happening, but you know what? I trust you still. How many of y'all know you can trust without understanding? There are certain things that your children don't understand why you don't give it to them when they want it. But, 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 uh, but, but if, if they trust you, amen, it comes to pass in your due timing, right? He says, Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. I'm a what? Say it out loud. That's a word we don't hear a lot nowadays. 
She says, I am a what? In other words, she had not had sexual relations with a man. And young brothers, I'm going to tell you this. Young brothers, celebrate your virginity. <laughs> young ladies, celebrate your virginity. Okay, 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 you have messed up. Okay, you, you, okay, you had sex before. Okay, but start being a virgin now. I said, start being a virgin now. Amen. Give God honor. Give God honor. Start now. I, I didn't come to this corner for any reason. I just, I just this is my parent. <laughs> Some of y'all are why you come over here, Pastor? What you trying to say? You trying to call me out? No. <laughs> you can start being a virgin now. Y'all mean mug me. Admit, y'all mean mug me when I came over there. <laughs> Guys, he, he, he. let me say something. All of us, if we were truly honest, have made choices and decisions we wish we could have back. Come on. I, I, I need somebody to be honest. Huh? There's some things we've done in your past that you don't want the book open on. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing, guys. And, and guys, we learned this yesterday, didn't we? See, <laughs> your failure can be a backdoor to your success. I like that. God can use your mess up and make a miracle out of it. God can use the... <laughs> Let me say something right quick. Holy Ghost told me something. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> my mess up opened the door to my salvation. My mess up with your mother, amen, caused me to turn around. Do you hear me? And you are a miracle. Amen. Let me tell you, I don't think I'd be here today if the Lord had changed my heart because of my mess up. Yes! Oh, yes! We wouldn't be here today if God hadn't taken my mess up and turned it into a miracle. Yes! Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, uh, won't he do it? My mess up at 16 has turned into a miracle. God used it to change me. He used it to deal with my heart. Oh, yes. So I'm going to tell you all, all of y'all out there, that you've had some mess up. You had more than one, whatever. Listen, God ain't through with you yet. Let him in. I got I got I got I got I got to stop. I got to stop. Watch, watch. Mary, Mary I, I, I didn't intend to, I didn't intend to share that, but you know what? Holy Ghost said, share that. It says, Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. Look at verse 35. It says, the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the baby be, to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Verse 36 says what? Watch this. What's more, your relative, your relative, your cousin, your cousin Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren. Huh? People used to say you ain't gonna mount to nothing. 
People used to say you ain't no good. People said you will never be able to do this. People used to say and talk about you, but listen, don't, don't you dare listen to that. Start speaking what God says about you. People used to say she was barren, <laughs> but she's been having her six months. That's your cousin. I'm going to give you, the Bible says, in the mouth of Craig of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. The angel came and gave her a word. said, well, I'm going to encourage you. Your cousin was barren. They were, they were talking about her because she couldn't have any children, but now she's pregnant. For nothing is impossible with God. 38, come on, come on, I got to finish up. Watch this. It says, man, now watch this. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have what? Said. May everything that you have what? May everything that you have what? It didn't say thought. Meditate. Let everything that you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. KJV says, be it unto me according to thy word. She received. She had questions. She had dialogue with the messenger of God. And it's okay to ask God questions. It's okay to have dialogue with God to try to get understanding. But she did not doubt God. She said, be it unto me according to my word. Oh, oh, Zachariah, you remember that fellow that God said, shut your mouth. Matter of fact, you ain't going to be able to say nothing. Until that day, he wrote the name down. And when he wrote the name down, Deliverance came. Am I right about that? He was, he, was, he was finally able to talk again, but sometimes we mess our own self up by what we're saying about our own self. And God has said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut. God got to shut some of our mouths because we keep speaking doubt and unbelief, praying doubt and unbelief, and God says, shut your mouth. I got to stop. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at David. And see him and what he declared and what he spoke and see how his word resulted in victory as he faced a giant in his life. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. As every head bowed, every eye closed.